Hello, everyone. I'll present my joint work with Hu Jialin, Fang Song, and Vinod Vaikuntanathan, uh, where we show that oblivious transfer is in MiniQCrypt. So the main object of our result is, uh, is uh, implementing the OT functionality. So here we have two parties, a sender and a receiver. And the sender sends a message, uh, two messages, M0 and M1, to, to the idea of functionality, while the, the receiver receives a bit B. And the idea of functionality just repasses the message MB to the receiver. So notice that this, the, the sender didn't learn which bit B was learned, like MB was learned by the receiver. And the receiver didn't learn the, um, the second bit, that the, like the second message chosen by the, server, uh, by the sender. And uh, you might already know that uh, OT is a fundamental uh, cryptographic primitive. So in, in particular, it, it uh, implies multi-party computation. So let me talk a bit about uh, protocols for OT. So it is well known that with only classical resources, OT can be built from public key encryption, but we have no good results to build OT from 1A functions. So in particular, in Pagliazzo and Rudich, they prove that uh, OT cannot be built from 1A functions in a black box way. In the quantum setting, Crepo and Killian, uh, and later BBCS, they proposed a protocol where OT could be built from commitment schemes. So this would, like, they didn't uh, formally prove that, but this would uh, imply that uh, OT could be built from, um, from uh, 1A functions because com uh, vanilla commitment schemes can be built uh, from 1A functions. But later uh, uh, on, on, on several results that actually prove the, secu the rigorous security of uh, CK and BBCS, they showed that uh, for, for, for implementing this commitment scheme, we need actually, and, and proves the security of LT, we need that, uh, that the commitment schemes are extractable and equivocal. And so far, we don't know any uh, equivocal and extractable commitment from, um, from one of functions with only classical resources. And our results is actually showing that in the quantum case, uh, we, we can build extractable and equivocal commitment schemes uh, from our functions, and of course, quantum resources. And in particular, this implies that OT and multi, gen, more generally multi-party computation is in mini QCrypt. That's a parallel of Impagliazzo's five, five worlds, where we have one of functions and quantum resources. As a remark, uh, there is a concurrent independent work by Bartusek, Coladangelo, Curana, and Ma that shows uh, uh, this, uh, an, uh, an extractable and equivocal commitment, but uh, using a very uh, a different route technically. <clears throat> so let, let me give more details what we mean by equivocal and extractable commitment. So as you might know, a commitment scheme is a protocol between two parties, the committer and the receiver, and the committer has a message M. And uh, the, this uh, protocol has two phases, a commitment phase where the, the, the committer uh, provides a commitment of M to the receiver and an opening where the committer uh, reveals the message M to the receiver. And we want to prove two properties for this uh, commitment, pro uh, commitment scheme protocols. First is hiding, meaning that uh, the, the receiver cannot learn the message just from the, uh, in the commitment phase. Uh, but here we're interested in a stronger security notion that's equivocality, that's the simulation version of hiding. And uh, to show equivocality, we have to show an algorithm equivocator who is able to, to open the message M to a different value M prime and a malicious receiver who might uh, do an arbitrary polynomial time quantum, uh, quantum computation and output some quantum state row. We won't distinguish uh, when the equivocator open to, to the right message and to a different one. Uh, and here, this is uh, made more concrete by, by saying that uh, the output of the malicious receiver on the honest case and in this uh, equivocation case, uh, the, these two states that the, the receiver output, uh, they are computationally indistinguishable. And of course, you might, uh, you might uh, ask how, how the equivocator would be able to open to different values, but uh, not breaking the binding property that I'll mention later to, to, uh, of the protocol, is that the equivocator has uh, more resources or more power than, than the original committer. For example, it is able to rewind. So the second security property that you want from this commitment scheme is extractability, and is the simulation version of a binding. 
Uh, and here we want the, like two, we have two scenarios. So in the first scenario, we have like the, this algorithm called the extractor that just outputs the message M that the, the, the mal uh, possibly malicious committer open in the second phase. And on top of that, we also assume that the committer outputs some quantum state row. In the second scenario, the extractor is able to output some message M prime just in, already in the, uh, in the first phase. And again, after the, the protocol finishes, the committer C tilde outputs some message, uh, some quantum state uh, sigma. And uh, the security here is that uh, the states uh, rho and sigma, they're computationally distinguishable and M is equal to M prime. And again, the extractor here would be able to, to, to do this without breaking hiding, hiding because uh, uh, she would have access to extra resources, for example, rewinding again. So as I said, we want to build uh, extractor commitments and in particular, this implies OT from 1A functions and, and quantum resources. So let me tell you a bit uh, how, how we do this. So the first thing is uh, building equivocal commitments and this can be done actually only, only classically. And what it, uh, it can be seen is that using these equivocal commitments and implementing this uh, BBCS or CK protocols with equivocal commitments, this already gives some weak notion of OT, meaning unbounded simulator OT. Then what it shows is that using a garbled circuits, we can uh, use unbounded simulator OTs to have unbounded simulator verifiable disclosure of secrets. And then we show that from these uh, verifiable CDS, we were able to, to implement extractor commitments. And now I'll explain each of these steps independently. So as I said, the first thing is showing uh, equivocal commitments only classically. So we start from a base commitment where the committer and the receiver, they share some pa public parameters. And then the committer uh, sends the commitment of M using some one as R. And in this base commitment, uh, the, the committer just sends M and R to the receiver, who then checks if uh, C is indeed the committer of M using one as R. And uh, in order to make this protocol equivocal, we just uh, replay, uh, change the, the, the opening phase. And instead of sending the, the run on SR, the, the committer uh, proves that there exists some R such that uh, M is the commitment, uh, C is the commitment of M using run on SR. And if you implement, use this basic commitment, uh, for example, with now or commitment scheme, uh, since binding is uh, statistical, so there exists a single R with overarming probability, and then we have the security guarantees for, for, for this new protocol. Uh, to show equivocal, uh, equivocality, we need to, to show the equivocator, and this equivocator just uh, performs the honestly in the, the original case, in the, in the, sorry, in the op, uh, commitment phase. But then in the opening, uh, the equivocator chooses some message M prime. And then uses the zero knowledge simulator to convince that uh, C is a commitment of M prime using run on SR. And by the zero knowledge property and by the hiding property of the base commitment scheme, uh, we can show that the, the, the output of the, uh, of, uh, the equivocator is uh, indistinguishable from the output of the original protocol. So with that, we have these equivocal commitments and using this previous result, this already gives us this unbounded simulator OT. And now my goal is to explain uh, like these verifiable CDS protocols and explain how to use it to, to finally achieve extractable commitment schemes. So oh, we do a conditional disclosure of secret for some NP relations. So it's just a, a set of uh, pairs of input and witnesses such that for, for, for which there is an polynomial time algorithm V such that V on XW uh, outputs one, so it accepts if and only if X and W belongs to this relation. And a CDS for this relation is this ideal protocol where the sender chooses some input X and some message M. The receiver chooses some uh, witness W and finally, the, this verifiable CDS sends a message M prime to the receiver such that M prime is equal to M if XW belongs to this relation or it outputs perp otherwise. So uh, the, the, the main idea here is that uh, the, the, the receiver will learn the message chosen by the sender if and only if it has the witness to the corresponding input. Uh, in this setting, we want uh, an extra property from uh, CDS protocols. We want it to be verifiable. 
So we want to have a protocol where the sender and the receiver, they exchange, ex, um, exchange message back and forth. And uh, since we want quantum protocols, this message could be classical or quantum. Uh, but here we can uh, fix for, for the classical messages, a classical transcript tau. So this is not possible for quantum messages, but we can fix them for the classical one. So, and you call tau this classical transcript. And we say that this protocol is a verifiable CDS protocol. If first it implements FCDS, so if it implements the CDS idea functionality. And if on top of that, um, the, protocol, uh, the protocol is binding, meaning that uh, the, there exists a, um, a unique message that the malicious sender could use uh, and, and, it, and we can verify that this is the case. So in, in, in order to show that it's verifiable, what we want is that the sender is able to output some proof pi and there exists some algorithm that receives as input, the tra classical transcript tau, the input x, the message m, and the proof pi. And uh, if the sender and the receiver are honest, this algorithm outputs one if the, these values are provided honestly. And we want also binding such the, uh, and says that for um, every malicious um, uh, sender as tilde, that outputs some message m tilde and some uh, proof by tilde. Uh, we have that uh, the following uh, event happens with uh, over uh, with negligible probability. So the, the event that we want to happen with negligible probability is the following. So we want that the verification passes with m tilde and by tilde, and the message provided by the receiver is not m tilde if x and w belongs to the, the relation. So we don't want that the verification passes with m tilde and m tilde uh, was not the message that would be given to the receiver, okay? So let me tell you how to build these uh, extractable and equivocal commitment schemes from CDS. Uh, and the protocol has four phases. So the first phase is the trap set, trapdoor setup where the receiver just sends a commitment of zero and proves in zero knowledge that it is indeed the commitment of zero. Secondly, uh, they run a VCDS protocol for the relation uh, of, of inputs that are commitments of one. And the, and the witnesses are the corresponding randomness uh, for, 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 for the commitment. Okay, the, the randomness is used to commit to one. And the input chosen to the, uh, by, by the committer is the commitment sent by the receiver in the very first message. And the message will be M that will be used to, like th this is the message that the, the committer wants to, uh, uh, this is the message that the committer wants to commit uh, in, the, in the later phase, okay? And uh, the receiver on their side, they, they, they use as witness the run on SR, and then they verify VCDS outputs the output of uh, VCDS to both parties. Finally, in the commitment phase, the committer just sends a commitment C star of M using random as R star and proves in zero knowledge that there exists some value of M and R star such that this commitment is well formed and the message is, is correct. Like a, 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 that this message allows us to pass uh, the, the, the verification of the verifiable CDS protocol. Finally, in the opening phase, uh, the prover, uh, sorry, the committer just sends the message M and the zero knowledge proof that uh, C star is indeed a commitment of M of using some runnings R star. And we have that this protocol is binding because uh, if no trap are set up, then the, the information of M is not revealed by the VCDS. And we also have the binding of the, of the, of the base protocol and the zero knowledge protocol. So th this implies that no information about M is leaked to the receiver. We also have hiding, and the hiding also comes from uh, from the from the uh, there is no trapdoor, and all the all the um, all the properties of the VCDS and the commitment scheme and zero knowledge protocol. And now we, we can show extractability. So for extractability, we we the extractor for, can first replace this zero knowledge proof by zero knowledge simulation. Uh, and here, um, uh, the, like the, these two like these two experiments are indistinguishable because of the zero knowledge property of the protocol. Then the extractor can just replace the commitment of zero by a commitment of one. 
And by the hiding property of the base protocol, these experiments are indistinguishable as well. So once the extractor has replaced the, the commit by one, then uh, she can just input the randomness R used to, to, to perform this commitment. And she received a message in prime that's supposed to be M uh, that, 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 that is committed by the, by, uh, by the prover, sorry, by the committer. And by the, by the soundness of the zero knowledge proof, we have this indeed the case, like this, the M that is sent by the VCDS in the, in the second phase is the same M that's committed by the committer in the second phase. Okay, so we have extractability. And finally, for equivocality, we use the same trick that we use in, in, the, in the first, uh, the, in the first uh, part of this, uh, like in the, in the first equivocal commitment scheme, is that uh, the zero knowledge proof, so the, the, the equivocator can just uh, run a simulation of uh, send M prime and run a simulation that, uh, that uh, C star is a commitment of M prime under runners R star. So we have, what I just showed is that from this unbounded simulator of verifiable CDS, we can have extractable commitments. And the only missing step now is showing that uh, from unbounded simulation of T, we have this uh, unbounded simulator of CDS. And for that, we use garbled circuits. And these are composed by three algorithms, the garbler, the encryptor, and the evaluator. And the garbler receives as input some circuit uh, that uh, maps n-bit input to a k-bit output. And it outputs some garbled version of the circuits it had and pairs of labels, one pair for each input uh, bit. These labels are then in, uh, the input to an encryptor that also receives some input X. And using this input X, it just uh, chooses the right label. Like uh, for, for each pair of labels, it chooses the right one. And this is uh, what we call the, the garbled input. And then from the garbled circuit and the garbled input, the evaluator outputs some value Y. And we want that uh, for correctness that y is indeed uh, the value of c when the input is x. And for security, we want that there exists some simulator garb sim such that the, uh, only from y, so from the output of the evaluator, the garbled simulator can output pairs of circuits and, uh, and inputs that are indistinguishable from the garbled circuits and garbled inputs. Moreover, we know that uh, from Yao's result in 86 that uh, there are garbled schemes for uh, based only on 1A functions. So our goal now is to build uh, use the garbled circuits to, to build uh, these verifiable CDS protocols. And in this protocol, again, we have the sender receiver. And let's have a first attempt where the sender sends the input to the receiver and then computes the, the garbled circuit that uh, for, for the circuit where the, uh, on input W outputs M if XW is in the relation or it outputs perp otherwise. So it cre uh, can create the garbled circuit and send it to the receiver and also computes the labels that are given as input to, to a no T functionality. And the receiver would be able to choose from using the, the, uh, the witness that she has, uh, pick the right labels and then compute the garbled version of the circuit using the evaluator. But this is problematic because we don't have any guarantee that the, the, the labels and the garbled circuit are performed correctly, like they're implemented correctly. And this could leak information to the resender. So instead of what we want is that uh, like uh, the, the sender will not create one version of the garbled circuit and labels, but it will create two lambda of them where lambda is a security parameter. And we send all of these garbled circuits together with the commitment of the message that was used to like the, 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 the message uh, chosen by the sender and the commitments of each one of the labels. And on top of that, it proves that all of these values, they are consistent, meaning M is the message used in all the garbled circuits and uh, the, all the commitment schemes, they are well formed. Then uh, the, the sender chooses a uh, the, the labels in the random is used as the labels as the input to the OT. And uh, instead of using all of them to compute uh, the, the message M, the, the receiver will pick half of them to test if the commitments are correct, to, to indeed, uh, yeah, that, that they all, that they're all well formed, and half of them will be used for, for the computation. And for the test, so for, for the computation rounds, the this receiver uses the, the actual witness uh, as the input to the OT. But for the test rounds, the, 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 the receiver will pick just random bits as inputs to the OT. 
And uh, after running the OT protocol, the, the receiver uh, aborts if the zero knowledge fails or if one of the sets round fails. Otherwise, she can use one of these computation rounds to extract uh, the right message. And uh, we can show that this is a CDS because the, like, uh, if, if the receiver does not have the witness, then the garbled secret won't, will always output perp and uh, not, uh, she cannot learn it for the garbled circuit. And it's also verifiable because the, ser uh, the, the sender can just output our star. And uh, the verification algorithm just checks that if C star is equal to this commitment of M sent by the sender in the second message. And for that, we can show correctness and binding. So this finishes our, uh, um, like our proof by, by showing that from only functions and quantum, we can build extract commitments and OT. Uh, so in this result, we show that uh, in general, secure multi-party computation is mini QCrypt. So we can build it from one functions and quantum. And I think the main open question is what else can we do from one functions in the quantum world? So can you have that other functionalities that we don't know how to do it classically? And uh, to conclude, I'd like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>